The NES homebrew community is a thriving scene where hobbyists and professionals alike can take a nosedive into the nitty gritty of how games for this classic console were made. You'll find passion projects, fan translations for games never released in your region, and silly hacks for the games you know and love. It's actually kind of amazing that even to this day, development is in full force for a console that's over 30 years old. The only caveat is, you need to know your way around the dark and scary corners of the internet to find them. And speaking of scary, the retrocentric folks over at Mega Cat Studios and Retrotainment Games have laboriously studied the ancient and eldritch 8-bit scriptures to bring us not one, but two spooky NES games just in time for the eeriest night of the year. With their chilling entries, Haunted Halloween 86 and Creepy Brawlers. The best part is, you won't have to dust off your big grey toaster to play them, because they're both available right now on the Nintendo Switch. Feeling right at home on the NES, Haunted Halloween 86 and Creepy Brawlers were developed with the restrictions and challenges native to the hardware in mind, mostly because that's where they were intended to run. And not only that, but they pay homage to some of the classics from the 80s, like Bad Dudes or Double Dragon in the case of Haunted Halloween, and Punch-Out in the case of Creepy Brawlers. Only spookier! Truthfully, the coolest thing about these games is that you can actually acquire an honest-to-goodness physical NES cartridge for them. In other words, a brand new set of NES games. Think about it! Honestly, it's that fact alone that makes them so unique. They're like the games you grew up with, except they're Halloween-themed. And you'd be able to line them up with all the other favorites from the era on your shelf. But on the other hand, the fact that they're so true to the original design philosophies of the NES hardware kind of hinders them. At least when you're playing the digital versions on a modern console. I mean the novelty of being able to hold the physical cartridge in your hand isn't there, and that feeling of playing a brand new game on this vintage piece of technology is lost. And all you're left with is a flat experience that you probably would have just rented once and never touched again. While playing them, the controls never felt responsive, the password-based continue systems were antiquated, and the sprite work was just okay. Truth be told, it wasn't all bad though, because I really liked the upgrade system in Haunted Halloween 86. It added a nice layer of depth and strategy to the game, instead of just having to beeline it through the story. And the fact that all of the opponents in Creepy Brawlers were monsters was super cool and inspired. Not to mention it had an achievement system. But because the devs were restricted by the specs of the NES, I feel the game suffered somewhat in retrospect. And if given the opportunity to expand upon these games using modern hardware and design techniques, I think these games could really shine. It's also probably why so many retro games being ported to modern consoles these days have so many extra little features added to them for those of us spoiled by contemporary conveniences.